Hello, gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert, and I'm here with two shiny new smartphones, the Zenfone 5 and the OnePlus 6. Can you actually tell which is which? Probably not from this front angle, they do look very, very similar, but there is a world of difference between the two. In case you're curious, this is Asus's baby here on the left, and this is the OnePlus 6 here on the right. So let's do a quick side-by-side -side and work out which one might be best for you. Well, let's see, from this front angle, they do look very, very similar indeed. The OnePlus 6 is ever so slightly bigger with a 6.28 inch screen compared with the standard 6.2 inch screen here on the Zenfone 5. And of course, they both rock a bit of notch action up top just to help that display stretch all the way to the upper limits. As you can see, they both rock a shiny glass uh, finish. In the case of the OnePlus, you can actually pick it up with a matte finish as well, but it still is constructed from glass. In the case of the Asus, so you get a nice bit of aluminium banding as well. They do unfortunately scuff up a little bit. When the uh, the light catches them just in the wrong way, you can quite clearly see the smudges and fingerprints, scuffs and everything as well. So you might want to give them a, a bit of a buffing every now and then just to kind of uh, clean them up a bit. And neither of these phones are IP rated, but uh, the OnePlus 6 is actually surprisingly water resistant. You can actually give it a bit of a dunking in a sink or a bath and it will actually survive all right, although we'd recommend not doing it if at all possible. Unfortunately, there's no kind of water resistance on the Asus Z Fold 5, although we have given it a bit of a spray, and it again seems absolutely fine, so fine for using in the rain, for instance. They do both use a bit of Type-C USB for charging back up. You've got your speaker grill down there as well, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in both cases as well for using wired headphones. Aside from that, the only real physical difference is the fact that you've got this alert slider here on the side of the OnePlus, and that just allows you to quickly switch between silent mode, full-on mode, and vibrate mode. You will, of course, notice that they both have a rear-mounted fingerprint sensor as well, quite an oval shape here on the OnePlus, as a traditional rounded on the Zen phone, and in both cases, they're reasonably nippy as well. If you just give them a quick tap now. As you can see, the Zen phone is a light, slightly lagging behind the OnePlus, not quite as swift. Uh, but still reasonably nippy. Uh, you won't be hanging around too long to get into your desktops. But yeah, that OnePlus fingerprint sensor, you're just straight into that desktop, so no delay whatsoever. As I mentioned before, slightly different size of screens. You've got a 6.2-inch Super IPS Plus display here on the Zenfone 5, and you've got a AMOLED display at a 6.28-inch here on the OnePlus. In both cases, you've got a stretch aspect ratio, uh, so it's an 18x9 here on the Zenfone, and it's a 19x9 here on the OnePlus, hence it's slightly taller. And of course, that stretch aspect ratio basically just means they're better for watching the likes of Netflix, things like that. You don't get the letterboxing up at top and down below, so it fills the screen nicely. Thankfully, with no intrusion from that notch. And in both cases, it's a full HD panel as well, so nice and crisp. If you are uh, getting that close there, you'll see you won't notice any individual pixels. The likes of HD movies and stuff like that, nice and crisp. As for the colours, they're ever so slightly more punchy here on the OnePlus, thanks to that AMOLED panel. But the IPS screen on the Zenfone isn't too far behind, to be fair. The colours do kind of pop uh, off the display as well. You get slightly warmer colours by default here on the Zenfone, but you can fully customise that if you dive into the display, go down to screen colour mode. And as you can see, you've got the usual blue light filter stuff, which you also have on the OnePlus for more comfortable uh, even and viewing. And as you can see here, you can actually fiddle around with the color temperature, make it nice and cold if you want, or make it warmer if you like. And again, if you dive into color mode, you can fully customize it in there, the hue, the saturation, you can even make it black and white if you want. You also get plenty of customization here on the OnePlus as well. So if we dive again into the display settings, you'll see you can go to, where is it? screen calibration, and as you see, there's an sRGB uh, mode if you want very accurate color reproduction for the sRGB gamut. Uh, you can actually do custom colors, so again, you can make it cold or warm, and there are various other options to play around with as well. On both of these cases as well, if you're not a fan of the old notch up top, you can actually hide it from view, uh, like so, and that just gets rid of it, so if you then dive back into the desktops, as you can see, it's almost as if there was no notch whatsoever. And if we just dive in here and take a look at a nice colourful picture, uh, again, it just shows you how they compare for that colour reproduction. And uh, again, not a massive difference between the two, but the OnePlus ever so slightly more vibrant for some of those uh, richer colours such as the reds and uh, the yellows. Is one better than the other in terms of the display tech? Not really, I would say. I'd say they're both fine, they're both nice and spacious displays. Plenty colourful, and of course you've got all that deep customization. So what's actually running the show? Well, it is Android Oreo in both cases, but of course you've got a heavy overlay sat on top of both of them. You've got the Zen UI 5 here on Asus' Zenfone, and you've got a nice bit of Oxygen OS here on the OnePlus. Now both have a very similar look and feel. You've got your apps tray, you can pull down your notifications bar in order to fiddle around with shortcuts and uh, check out, obviously, your notifications. Uh, but you also get lots of other bonus features thrown on there too. 
In both cases, you can pull down the notifications bar nice and easily. You can just drag down from anywhere on the screen in the case of the OnePlus. Uh, with the uh, Zen Phone, it's a case of swiping down the fingerprint sensor, and that again just pulls down that notifications bar. Have the Zen Phone, they do go one step uh, further as well. You can double tap the home button. You can double tap the home button, thank you. Uh, and then that puts it into basically the one handed mini mode. And in this mode, uh, you can basically uh, rock all of your apps, do exactly what you want to in that easy one handed mode. Again, drag down the notifications bar, and then just a quick tap there when you're done. Sadly, there's nothing like that on the OnePlus. In addition to that fingerprint sensor uh, action as well, you also get a nice bit of face recognition as well. So if we dive into security, as far as the face recognition is concerned, the OnePlus absolutely nails it for me every single time. Uh, just hit the power button and sort of vaguely emanate at your face. And then you just you don't even see the lock screen most of the time. Even when it's really dark or tricky lighting conditions, uh, it just works an absolute storm. And I guess the Zen Phone, it does tend to work pretty well as well, but you'll tend to see the lock screen and there's a bit of a delay usually depending on the lighting conditions and everything. In the dark, it doesn't work so well and it can get uh, kind of fuzzled. Uh, by me wearing glasses, things like that as well. So definitely in terms of face recognition, the OnePlus is the winner. Now there are absolutely burger tons of other uh, features to go into as well. So I can't go into all of them because that would just be insane. This video would be about three hours long, but they both for instance rock a kind of gaming mode, which just allows you to block notifications. And for instance, you can do a nice bit of live stream into your YouTube or your Twitch account right here on the Zenfone. And you've also got various gesture supports and all the rest of it as well. So plenty of features packed into both of these devices. When it comes to performance, there can only be one winner, just like Highlander, I guess. And uh, in this case, it's the OnePlus 6. Absolutely storms it with the Snapdragon 845 chipset. Frankly, the most powerful platform you can get on a mobile phone right now, backed by either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM. In the case of the Zen Phone 5, sadly, it's the more modest Snapdragon 636, backed by 4 gigs of RAM. So you will see the occasional little stutter. If you dive on into Geekbench, you'll see a very clear difference between the two. In fact, the OnePlus isn't far from doubling the score that you get on the Zen Phone 5, uh, which pretty much sums it all up. And if we were to jump into a bit of PUBG action, you'll find that both of them do run quite smoothly, although there is a difference in terms of the graphical settings. So as you can see here, the OnePlus defaults to the HD mode and high frame rate, whereas you get the balanced and the medium frame rate here on the Zen Phone. You can, of course, boost uh, them up a bit. The, the OnePlus does support ultra frame rate, if you so desire. Um, but to be honest, uh, under the default settings, they both have a nice smooth frame rate, um, ever so slightly better on the OnePlus. You will notice the detail levels are slightly better in the case of the OnePlus on that default high setting, uh, but it's still perfectly playable here on the Zen Phone. So there you go. If you like your PUBGs, you like your online games, uh, either will definitely suffice. As for the storage, you get plenty of space for all of your apps and media as well. 64 gigs here in the case of the Zen Phone. You get a minimum of 64 gigs here on the OnePlus as well. You can actually boost that up to 128 or even 256 if you so desire. However, the Zen Phone 5 is the only phone here to actually boast micro SD support up to 400 gigabytes. You don't get that on the OnePlus, hence you might want to get one of those higher storage models if possible. As for the battery tech, it's a 3,300 milliamp cell in both of these cases. Uh, you do get over a day of life from the uh, OnePlus quite happily. Seems to be about a day so far on the Zen Phone, but we're hoping that it'll get slightly better uh, the more that I use it. And of course, you get a bit of fast charge in both cases as well, though it seems to be better on the OnePlus with that dash charge tech. And of course, you get the usual battery saving modes and everything if you're struggling a bit and you're nowhere near a plug. Uh, and of course, you do get a nice bit of battery care action here on the Izu Zen Phone as well. It's kind of like the Qnovo tech, basically just helps to prevent your battery from uh, being damaged over time from lots of charging. Which brings us neatly onto the camera tech, and as you may have noticed before, they both rock a dual lens rear snapper. So in the case of the Isuzu Zenfone 5, you get a 12 megapixel primary lens with an f1.8 aperture, and that's got optical image stabilization built into it as well, just to help keep your uh, shots nice and sharp, especially in low light when your hand's a bit juddery. Definitely good after a few too many pints. And that's backed by a secondary 8 megapixel f2.0 lens, uh, this time with a 120 degree wide angle view for capturing like a nice vista or a big group shot. In the case of the OnePlus, you get a 16 megapixel primary lens, that's an f1.7, and that's also got optical image stabilization built into it as well. And that's backed by a secondary 20 megapixel lens, again, I believe it's f1.7, and uh, in combination, they can shoot some really nice sharp portrait shots, something you can also do on the Zenfone. 
If we build up those camera apps, you'll see you've got a load of extra bonus features and toggles and things that you can play around with. I mean, obviously you can just take a quick simple shot with a quick hit of that shutter button. In the case of the Zen phone, you can jump between the standard and the secondary wide angle lens with a quick tap of these little buttons down here. You obviously don't get that option on the OnePlus because you don't have a wide angle lens, but you can do a nice bit of uh, zoom action by tapping that little icon there. As mentioned before, you get a form of portrait mode in both of these cases. Portrait mode on the OnePlus, depth effect here on the Zenfone 5, and that just uh, helps to capture your subject nice and cleanly and adds a blurry Bokka style effect in the background. You've also got a few other little bonus modes in the case of either of these handsets. Uh, so for instance, you can obviously jump into full video, you can shoot uh, slow motion or time-lapse footage, and you've also got full manual controls as well. In the case of the Zenfone, you've got a couple of bonus bits such as you can easily shoot a, a compiler GIF, just by taking lots of photos and it stitches them together for you, and a super resolution photo which basically just takes lots of photos and then again stitches them together. And of course the, uh, the Pro Mode is pretty good in both of these cases, as you can see you've got full access to the likes of ISO, white balance, all that kind of shenanigans. You also get a histogram in both cases as well, so you can see if you're going to get a nice balanced shot, and you get this nice bit of leveller action too, so you know if your shot is going to be wonky or not. As for the video quality, you can shoot full HD footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and you can even shoot it at 120 here on the Zenfone, I'm guessing that's for the slow motion action. Uh, you've also got that choice here on the OnePlus as well, but then you can also shoot Ultra HD at up to 60 frames per second as well on the OnePlus, whereas it tops out, unfortunately, at 30 frames per second here on the Zenfone. And with a quick video test as well, the OnePlus frankly nails it with the image stabilization. It's absolutely fantastic, just completely unbeatable. And that, in a nutshell, is Zenfone 5 versus the OnePlus 6. If you've got any questions or anything, let us know in the comments below. Which one tickles your fancy the most? Would you uh, be jumping on board with Asus's smartphone, or are you more of a OnePlus fan? Obviously, the OnePlus will cost more than the Zenfone 5. We haven't got the full UK price here, but we're expecting it to come in around the sort of 350-ish pound price point. Uh, whereas the OnePlus does start at sort of closer to 450, it's around 469 for the entry level version. So you will be paying a bit more for that extra premium performance. The Zenfone 5 definitely holds its own in for, as far as the display text concerned, fully customizable. The battery life seems to be pretty good, although not quite as good as the OnePlus, you lack that dash charge of course. And the camera tech, will be giving these a full test and out and a comparison, so stay tuned for that. So thanks for watching everyone, love you, bye!